read a shit ton of books, so. Pat on the back for Jay. Good job. I love Byron Chan. Drink every time Jay messes up an author. Mm. <coughs> yep, there you go, Mr. Person who always asked me to burp. You just got another one. You're welcome. This one that I didn't check the name of, it's in the Vampire Academy, it's Spirit Bound. <sighs> Why do I exist? Younger six, uh, sixter. Drink every time you mess up. Hey guys, it's Jay and today I am here with my May wrap up for 2017. I read a total of 23 books. So we're going to jump into it. I don't know if this is going to be a two part video. We're going to see what I'm editing. I actually have like a really good reading month. Like usually I always give one to two stars and a lot of these I actually gave like three, four or five stars. So like this is a miracle. Except the end I gave like a lot of ones, but shh, minor details. So without further ado, let us get started. <sighs> The first book I read in May is Who She Was by Stormy Smith. I have a full review of this book up there, so I'm not going to go into detail about it. But I give this book a 4 out of 5 stars. It was really good, not what I expected. If you want to see my full thoughts, then check out my review. The next book I read was Blood Promise by Rochelle Mead. This is the fourth book in the Vampire Academy series. I had put off reading the Vampire Academy series because after the third book, I like went into this huge book slump and I was like refusing to pick it up again because I was scared. But... What is wrong with me because this series is so good. I gave this one a 4 out of 5 stars. I don't want to give a synopsis because it's the fourth book in a series, but I really enjoyed this book. It was kind of slow at the beginning, so it was kind of boring, but it definitely picked up as the story progressed. I love Adrian. He is one of my favorite characters. I adore him, so I loved seeing him in this book. The next book I read was because my mom has been nagging me for like two years to pick up this book, so I was like, fine mom, I will, and I did, and I loved it. The book is The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern, and I ended up giving this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It is such an amazing book. I was really scared going into it because of all the hype around it and I was like I'm gonna hate it because I usually don't like books that other people like. So many regrets not reading this sooner. I don't want to give a synopsis of it since it's a book that I think you should go in not knowing anything about. It makes it so much more magical but the writing is amazing. It's so like whimsical and just mysterious and just how everything unfolds and connects in the end is so well done. So highly recommend this book if you haven't read it yet. The only reason I didn't give it a 5 out of 5 stars is because I found the pacing a little slow at times so I kind of got bored of it so I had to put it down a lot but it's definitely worth the read. The next book that I read for the month of May was Spirit Bound by Rochelle Mead. This is the fifth book in the Vampire Academy series, and I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars as well. As I said, I don't know why I waited so long to read these books, because they were really entertaining. This one was definitely more action-packed than the last one. It was a lot more twists and turns that I didn't see coming. Usually I can call them, but a couple of them in this book I was like, Damn! That just happened. I still love Rose in this book. I still love Adrian. I, I prefer Rose to be with Adrian over Dimitri because Dimitri is just boring to me. I don't like him that much, but Adrian is just my little sass master king and I just love him. So I definitely think that Adrian deserves better than Rose though, but... I also really enjoy Sydney and Abe. Those are two of my favorite characters in the book and I definitely did not see the ending coming. Definitely a cliffhanger. Was very excited to pick up the next book in the series, like, right away. The next book I actually got from one of my viewers. So hi, Brittany. Thank you so much for sending your book. It, it is Overruled by Brittany Joy. She asked if I wanted to read her book, and I was like, uh, yes, I do. It sounds so good. This book follows Nova Hart, who has returned to her hometown of Sterling, which she hasn't been to in years, because her cousin was recently orphaned, and he's going to live with them. Sterling is now run by Queen Katrina, who is an evil ruler who uses black magic to control her subjects. The Queen is watching Nova for a power that she doesn't even know that she possesses. Princess Jade is the next heir to the throne, but Queen Katrina will stop at nothing to make sure that her reign never ends. With the help of a very handsome guard named Kale, Jade and Nova need to work together in order to save the ones that they love. I read this book so quickly, it was so fast paced, really really entertaining. I ended up giving it a 3.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I really liked Nova as a main character. She was super badass throughout the entire book. I really enjoyed Queen Katrina as a villain. I thought she was very entertaining and just the perfect amount of evil. I don't know how I feel about Princess Jade. She was kind of boring and like bland to me. She didn't really stand up for herself at all. Also, I was kind of like, girl, come on, what you doing? 
I'm also not 100% sure on my feelings about Kale. I liked him at times, and then other times I was like, Go away, you're really annoying. So, not 100% sure how I'm feeling. I really like the magic system in this book. It was really interesting how it passed down from generation to generation. I really liked Nova's power, which I don't want to say what it is, but like, it would be super dope having that power. I really liked the dual perspectives. It was both Nova and Jade throughout the story, switching back and forth, so I really enjoyed that. And I'm actually very excited for the sequel of this book because I want to know what happens with Nova's family. There were a lot of twists that I didn't see coming, but there were also a lot of twists that I did see coming, so it made for a good balance. But overall, it was a really entertaining read. So the next five books, I'm not going to go into detail because I talked about them in my bout of books wrap-up. So I will leave that link up above if you want to check out the wrap-up to see my full thoughts on the books. I'll just do a super quick rundown of the star rating that I gave. The first book I read was The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. I ended up giving this a 2.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. The next book was Perfect by Ellen Hopkins and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. The next book I read for that readathon was The Last Sacrifice by Rochelle Mead and this is the sixth and final book in the Vampire Academy series and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. The last book that I read for that readathon was Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone by J.K. Rowling. If you want to see my full reaction video of reading this book for the first time as a 21 year old, I will leave that up in the boxy thingy. But I ended up giving this a 5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. The final book that I'm going to talk about in this part of my wrap up is Spill Zone by Scott Westerfeld. And this is illustrated by Alex Puvaland. And I was actually sent this by the publisher, so thank you to the publisher for sending me this. It was super nice of you to think of me. I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It was my first ever graphic novel. This book follows Addie and her younger sister Lexa, who lost both their parents in The Spill. Unable to provide for them both, Addie travels down to the spill zone in order to take pictures for clients of the weird buildings and creatures that, that now habitat the restricted areas. After a buyer comes forward and offers her something that she can't refuse, Addie must now break all the rules that she carefully placed in order to keep herself safe in order to get what the client wants. This is the first graphic novel in a new series, so it was mostly focusing on the world building of the story. The colors that the illustrator used really helped with the creepiness of the story, so like every time she's in the spill zone, it would be like these really I don't want to say gross, but they're kind of gross colors. That kind of made it really mysterious, and just anytime she was back in like the real world, it's more like bright and more colorful. If that makes sense, but it really helps with the creepiness of the book. Vespertine is Lexa's doll, seen here, and she is seriously so creepy, so I'm very excited to see how she fits into the next story. Really excited to see where this story goes. All right, guys, so that was my f part one of my wrap up. I will have my part two up shortly, probably on Friday, so you guys can see the rest of the books that I read. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!